accused of killing a 13-year-old boy and injuring the child's mother and younger brother in a shooting. Another man was also hurt in what police called a road rage incident. Webster followed the Bigelow family into a parking lot, opening fire on their car, killing 13-year-old Vaughn, hurting his mother, brother, and another witness. Webster has been convicted of 12 different counts, receiving the maximum sentence for every count. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for first-degree murder, as well as 48 years each for six counts of attempted murder and 32 years each for four counts of assault. He was also convicted of attempted assault. This video contains the interrogation of a man who shot four people during a road rage incident. In June of 2018, Megan Bigelow loaded up her three sons to take them for a visit to the dentist. The boys were athletic and energetic, so healthy that no one would believe that before the end of the day, one would be dead and another in critical condition. On the highway, Megan heard an emergency vehicle behind her. Following the law, she attempted to merge into another lane to get out of the way. In the other lane was Jeremy John Webster, a 23-year-old with a history of anger-related issues. He became enraged by Bigelow trying to merge in front of him and screamed at her through his window. That wasn't enough to satisfy him, so he followed her to the parking lot of the dental office where he got out of his car to confront her. Harsh words were spoken and Webster pulled a gun. He shot Megan four times and once she was on the ground, he began to shoot at her children, striking 13-year-old Vaughn and 7-year-old Asa. Vaughn was killed almost instantly and Asa was later taken to the hospital where he was placed in critical condition. While he survived, he had a permanent brain injury and limited ability to walk. Webster shot at another man in a parking lot before trying to make his escape. He managed to get to work before the police found him, where they took him into custody without incident. Okay, all right. Well, it is uh 839, so we were only here just a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to have a, uh, a couple officers come back in here and they'll take you to another area. And it might be a little while before they transport you to the, to the jail. So you'll just have to be patient, okay? Okay. All right. <coughs> Water? Um, sorry, you asked me a question. What would you say? What am I under arrest for? You're under arrest, arrest for murder. Murder? Yes. Swabs and all stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put your hands on your back for me. Thanks. Am I, am I wrong on that? Yeah, I'm 
Jeremy, I, uh, it's 8.52, it's just a couple of minutes since you were in here. I just went back to the uh, processing room where they uh, photographed you, uh -huh. and the officer that just brought you in told me that you told him that you wanted to say some things to me and you wanted to talk, correct? That, that guy just now? Yeah. Yeah. The uh, officer in there that was uh, uh, going to take your picture? Yeah. Okay. And I approached you and I said, is this true? Do you want to talk to me? And you said, yeah, I'd like to discuss this. I want to make a statement. Yeah, I at least want to all listen. I want to at least listen to what you have to say and okay. maybe I'll say something. Okay, well, that's fair. Do you remember the advisement form that I read to you here? I do. Okay, do you want me to reread it to you? Uh, or do you remember and understand what I read to you? I'll be more than happy to read it to you. If you want to read it, you can. If you understand that and you're willing to make a statement with me, I need you to sign right there. <coughs> and, uh, would you please date that? You know what today's date is? No. It's the uh, 14th of June. Okay. And. Uh, I'll write the time on there. It's about 8.53 p.m. Okay, do you need another water while we're uh, chatting here? Yes, please. No, okay, I'll get you one. Yep. You want one? Uh, yeah, I'll take one too. Okay. Uh, it's very important for me to hear what you have to say. I, I know there's typically when I deal with people that come in here, there's two sides to every story. And um, I don't know a whole lot about you. I'd like to learn a little bit about you. And what can you tell me uh, about today? What do you want to tell me about today? I'm just really tired. Okay. Why are you, why are you tired? I'm always tired. Why are you always tired? How long have you been tired? Okay. When I uh, was standing in here, you asked me what you're under arrest for, and I told you. Um, how did that make you feel? It just doesn't feel real. Okay. Webster is confused and having trouble processing everything. He had just been placed on new medication for his bipolar disorder, and his reaction could be in part from adjusting to the medication in combination with shock. How does it feel? That dream. A dream. Feels, feels like a dream? Bad. Like a really bad dream. So you do feel bad right now? That's true, yeah. Okay, huh? let me ask you this. How do you feel about what happened today? I'm just asking for your honest feeling. You said you had, it's like you had a bad dream and you're feeling bad. Yeah, I just don't know where to start, I have to tell you the truth. Okay. Well, we're, why don't you tell me where you came from today, or what, what car are you driving today? Uh, starting the car they put me on. You know, and I, I, don't, I wasn't there, so what kind of car are you driving? It's a Corolla. 
Okay, what color? Black. Okay, Toyota Corolla black. Is it a two or a four door? Four. Okay. Uh, did you start feeling bad when you were in Westminster today? What, uh, I guess, what purpose did you have coming to Westminster today? I was, work, I was working there. Oh, okay, where do you work? After the shooting, Webster went back to work for a short time. I just released another extremely intense case on my Patreon. When a suspect shoots a cop in a police station, shows a man driven to desperation from concern for his friend, and decides he will use force to get his answers. What happens next is shocking. You can watch that and many more at patreon.com slash strangers stories plus. Uh, right now I'm working for my cousin uh, remodeling houses. Oh, where's that? All over Denver. How long have you been working for your cousin? A couple, couple months. What kind of remodeling do you do? Uh, like kitchens and uh, Basement, uh, whatever. Okay, were you working with him today? I was working for him, but I was alone. Okay. What time did you come to work this morning to work for you? I left Colorado Springs at like 7 in the morning. Just trying to get here at 8.30. Okay. Where is it that you're working, Jeremy, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, it's just like a, my cousin's remodeling company. Okay. So are you working on an actual home right now? Yeah, multiple homes. Okay. So that was at 8.30. Now, when you drove down from Colorado Springs, were you alone, or did you have a work buddy with you? Uh, from Colorado Springs, I drove up alone. Okay. Okay. So how long did you work today? All day, like, uh, just a few hours? All day. Okay. Four thirty. Okay. Okay. So w is that home in Westminster? Is that why you're in the city of Westminster? Mm -hmm. Okay. About where is it? Do you know the approximate address? It's, uh, not far from there. I know it by uh, visual. Okay, is it near any main streets that I would recognize? Yeah. Make that main one and go down past the uh, gas station on the left and then there's like a, it's like a nice development right after that on the right. We've got a couple of those. I'm not, I don't know which one you're talking about. We got uh, several main streets up and down here, but that's not all that. Important, yeah, I so. Know. so you worked uh, all day and then you got off. So when, when you left, uh, where did you go? I drove home. Okay. What route do you take when you go home? Whatever the GPS tells me because of the oh, okay. traffic. So you got GPS on your phone? Uh -huh. Now, do you have your phone with you? Well, oh, the cops have it. Oh, they do? Okay. I didn't know that. Okay. So the GPS told you how to go home. So do you know what road you took home tonight? Well, it was a bunch of just got me on a bunch of, like, all over the place because of how bad the, the highway was. Okay. Was there some construction that you had to drive through? There was a lot of stuff. Okay. Well, why don't you tell me what happened when you were driving? I, uh, before all this stuff happened, why don't you tell me? When? To, when you're driving home, before you got over there where all this stuff happened, I have some information that there might have been something that happened before all of this, um, maybe some kind of a traffic altercation or some person road raging you or something. Tell me about that.
Okay. And, and uh, you said it's almost like a bad dream. Tell me the parts of this that you do remember then. Tell me the stuff you do remember. Shouldn't have come to Denver today. Okay. Well, it's real important for me to hear your side, Jeremy. Okay. I truly believe that there's two sides to every story. Webster is agitated and confused. He is unable to articulate his thoughts and seems to be trying to piece everything together in his mind. Do you know why this happened? So do you, did, did you just kind of snap? I have no idea what happened or what's happened. Now I, I have dreams like this all the time. Well, I just started medicine last night to stop them. What kind of medicine did you start last night? I don't know the name of it. You'll find it in the find it in my apartment for my surgery. Okay. So what doctor prescribed medicine for you? For the last few, few months now. The last two months. And what kind of doctor few, is it? A few months since um or March. Since March, okay. What kind of doctor? He's a psychiatrist. Okay. And he issued you a prescription. Okay. How often do you take this prescription? I just took the first one of that last night. There are a bunch of different ones. But okay. What time last night? Uh, right before bed. What time did you go to bed? I think or midnight. I would never do that. <clears throat> well, let me tell you what my observations are, Jeremy, is when we do our job, we look into people's backgrounds, and you've never been in trouble with the police. You're working. That's why I ask you, is this something, is there something that... Anyone who knows me won't be surprised, I'm sure. So anyone that knows you would be surprised Not if this happened? Be, no, I don't think they would be. Why? Why do you say that? this and after this and during well, I just don't know where to start okay. no, I to understand. give you the full picture I understand that and I know there's probably a lot and I, I just I, want to wake up I, okay I've got a lot of time to listen I've been losing my mind for years okay slowly so tell me about that. What makes you say, say that? I've just always been like just fucked in the head. I've always been trying to get better, but I just fucked in the head. I thought I was doing good, but I had it. I thought. Did that lady trigger something tonight? Is that what triggered this? The woman is Megan Bigelow, who sparked Webster's rage when she attempted to get out of the way of an emergency vehicle. Is it what she said to you, or when she got out of her car, or what? doesn't matter what happened. Well, it matters to me. I, I, I want to help you. Uh. Tell me what she did. Tell me what she did. She didn't do any 
So I you, just, I just, you, it was like I was watching from, like, the third person. Okay, tell me what you saw from third person. When she pulled into that, that parking lot and got out of the car, what did she say to you? Did she say something to you? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. <clears throat> and she got out of her car and did she approach you? Or did she just stand by her car? What did she do after the interaction between you and her in the parking lot? Did she just walk away? Or did she raise her arm up and do something? I don't know. What happened after she started walking away? We've, we've kind of got everything pieced together. We, we kind of already know what happened, Jeremy. We, we want to know why, and that's why I'm asking you. A bird in the head. Because you're fucked in the head? Just now, I've been... You see, I was, I was doing great. <laughs> been when did you start doing bad? You said you were doing great. Was there a point where you started feeling bad? No, oh, everything's been fucked, and I've just got a glimmer of hope. Okay. Let me ask you this, Jeremy. Did you did you get the gun before you were kind of feeling bad, or did you get it after you were feeling bad? The weapon was not a recent purchase, and there was nothing to suggest that he bought it for this purpose. Before we move forward, I want to extend my thanks for watching. This video today has no sponsor, so if you're enjoying it, subscribing helps the channel grow. You can also check out my second channel, Stranger Crimes, after this video. I don't remember any the, the details of that. So, do you just remember having the gun and you don't remember where you got it? I remember the scene from first person watching a, a gun get shot at people. Okay, go on. So you saw a gun shooting people. And that's exactly what happens in my dreams every night. My aunt. When you saw this... Only as the situation progressed that I realized that it was real. When did you realize it was real? When the cops pulled me over on the road. So I wasn't sure if I just imagined it or not. Okay. What did you think you imagined? Tell, tell me what you thought you imagined. The devil. Tell me what you remember seeing.
feel like you're seeing it right now. Are you? You seeing it play out in your head? I do. Tell us what happened. I just wanted to get through the fucking work day and go home. What are you seeing happen? Just explain it out loud. You're not a bad guy. You said you feel bad. <laughs> so just you need to just be mad about. Yeah. What happened with the gun today? You guys know what happened. We'd like to hear from you. This happened. We just have to deal with it, okay? We're here to listen to you. I know you're a good guy down, down deep. It doesn't matter anymore. It does to us. Fast. What happened? We weren't there, so I know you didn't want this to happen. But no, it did. I didn't. So what happened? I feel bad, so let's just deal with this now. Try. That's the best way to to deal with this is we just gotta get all up in the open. Okay? You're not a bad guy. I know. Yeah. I know. But something just took over. I didn't have any control. Look at what happened. Webster claims that he didn't have any control, but at this point, it is hard to tell if he is being truthful or trying to get the murder charge lowered. We know this lady came out of the car and said some things to you and you stayed in your car is what she told us. Who? Oh. The lady that got out of the car. Is that is that true? Did she get out of her car and you stayed in your car at first? I don't know. I don't know where all I can see. What do you see? All I can see is people getting shot. I don't... How many people did you see getting shot? Mm -hmm. More than one? More than one. More than two? What do those people look like? Again, it's, it's really not a, a, a big question for us as to what happened. It's very uh, important to us to hear hear from you. Okay? So much less to do with, you know? So much less to do? So much less to do with that. Whatever, I don't know what did it. Can I just ask you a couple questions? Maybe yeah, you can answer, maybe a yes or no. Yeah. What did you do with the gun? I didn't feel like I was doing anything. Well, I, I, I guess I need to clarify. After you left, what did you do with the gun? Oh. Did you leave it in your car? I don't know. 
did you put it someplace else? Part of our concern is if a lot of times people will panic and maybe get rid of a gun and we don't want a kid to get a hold of a gun and hurt themselves. And if that's the case, there's no law against throwing a gun out the window. If that happened, you need to tell us or if the gun is in the car. Do you understand how we'd be concerned about kids getting hurt? When asked about the gun, Webster becomes uncooperative and visibly detaches from the situation. I shouldn't have had a gun. I should have already been in the fucking room. Well, Jeremy, we see a lot of people that we wouldn't even give a chance to talk to. We see people that are so mean and angry and bad that we don't give them an opportunity to talk to them. Okay, we don't see that with you. Just like I'm Matt just said. I'm so tired of okay. everything. And happened so fast, it didn't feel real. Okay. Was there? I didn't wake up after. And I'm still here. Okay. So what happened? You know what happened. Why don't you tell us? Why me tell you? I want to hear you say it. I just want to hear from you. I don't know exactly what happened. I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what happened either. I just know. What do you What do you What do you know? I can see playing it in your head. No, it's just... I don't know, like I saw that yesterday I started taking a, something to help me stop having violent, surreal nightmares that make me not get any actual sleep. And then today this happens, and now it's a permanent version of that. Is this filling so, dreams? Okay. I'm sorry. Is this... Does this match one of your dreams? Every one of them. It's not. Tell me about your dreams. I'm always being pursued and, and like shot at. And it's just berries, but they're always really violent. Usually heroically violent. Not. Tell me what, what that means. Like saving people. Okay. How do you save them? By killing bad people. Okay. <laughs> but well, they just bury night to night. Okay. Do all of them involve violence? Yeah. Do any of them involve firearms, guns? Yeah. All of them. All of them? Okay. And everyone in my life knows. <laughs> there were people that were aware of his medical diagnosis, but did not know that he struggled to this extent. Who in your life knows this? Just anyone and everyone who knows me knows that I struggle with this. And, and, uh, Would your mom know it? Everybody knows. Anybody who's met me, it doesn't take long to figure it out. Yeah. Well, earlier you, you said it was okay if I asked you a yes or no question and you thought that'd be a good idea. So you remember that question I asked you about her getting out of the car? Yeah. Did you agree with that, that she got out of the car first? I don't know. Okay. Would you agree that she said something to you and maybe flipped her arm up in the air and, I don't know, did she... I'm sure you off? she called me something at some point. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I... How did that make you feel? I don't... 
I just feel dumb. I don't feel like I'm here. Never. Well, can I ask you another yes or no question? Yeah, you can ask whatever you want. Okay. Well, when you got out of your car, um, witnesses said you had the gun in your hand. And then you walked towards her. Do you remember that? I don't. not feel anything and still react. So is it safe to say you're numb when this is happening? Probably a good word for it. Probably a good word for it? Okay. So was it like shooting at something that maybe wasn't real? None of it's real. None of this is okay. real. Well, when you were shooting at her, did it seem like it was not real? 100%. Right now, I just hope that I wake up at some point. But I don't think that's going to happen. I got tricked. Hey, let me ask you another yes or no question. When you drove away from there, were you alone? I was alone the whole day. Okay. And when you drove home tonight down whatever route you take when the police stopped you were were you alone from all day long you didn't have anybody in your car with you witnesses and security cameras confirmed that webster acted alone that's, that's right so you're alone when this happened that we're we're trying to work out right now correct yes okay so you were driving the toyota camry when you pulled into that parking lot when the lady came out of the car and was talking with you you said she might have said a bad word. That doesn't matter. No, it matters to me what you have to say. We know that there was some kind of a, a thing that went on with her driving. Whenever it was, they should have just driven away. And that's probably a true statement, sure. She wasn't fucking there. This happened. Okay. When she was driving, is when that what? Like, I didn't have a gun. I'd be harmless all the time. But you did have a gun to there, right? Yeah. Okay. For sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No. What caliber is your gun? Nine millimeter. Okay. You know the brand of the gun? The Glock. Glock. You know the model? Nineteen. Okay. Are you a Glock guy? Do you know a lot about Glocks? No, I don't know anything about it. Okay. Guns. I'm just always afraid someone's out to fucking get me and fun. Do you normally keep the gun in your car or do you keep it in your house? Uh. Oh. Take it with me on the case anything happens. But do you do you have the? Uh, I know I do this for my guns. I I have the original box for them. You know when you buy them. I think Glock even has like a plastic hard plastic box. For do you have the do you have the plastic box for that that you keep it in? Okay. Got it. Did you buy it used I got or it used, yeah. you bought it used? Okay. Do you remember who you bought it from? The pawn shop would have required a background check, which Webster would have been able to pass without a criminal record. In in Colorado Springs? Yeah. Okay. So you bought it from a pawn shop in Colorado Springs? Okay, about a month ago? Mm -hmm. 
a longer, a, a long. Part of my job in assessing people who feel remorse and want to help as best they can, even in a, a bad situation, is detail me things that I already know. And then that makes me believe that this person wants to be honest and tell me what I already know. Okay? We don't think you're a bad guy. Sometimes we talk to a lot of people where certain things, and you're telling us that you've had these dreams, and I don't know, I, we all drive, and, and a lot of people get involved in these traffic things, and those are triggers for a lot of people getting into altercations. What didn't you see coming? Losing my presence in my own body. Okay. <clears throat> what would you like to tell those people who oh. that you shot? Some of them are. This is your chance to say how you feel about something that happened. It's not justified. It's not justified? Oh, I can't justify anything. I my presence. And I watched something terrible happen, and I'm going to be held responsible. Do you think that this terrible thing that happened is, do you know the difference between right and wrong? Sometimes. Do you give me an example of right and wrong, or do you know the difference between what right happened today was wrong? Okay, thank you. That's a mm -hmm. very okay. Do you think it's something that is against the law, or is that a stupid question? It's fucking real life, big time. After this was over and you left, how did you feel? I felt like nothing. You felt nothing? Did you drive away at normal highway speeds or did something else happen? I think it was normal. Yeah. Did you think that what you think? Getting it together in my, in my head. Getting it together in your head? I'm trying to think of It's been like there's it's been this external force. Did you think when you left that the police would be looking for you? I don't know what I it's just tough because I I'm just clearly not uh What did you feel when you left? What were you thinking? But that didn't happen. Okay. But you knew it did happen.
The detective has noticed how often Webster draws attention to his mental state and how he stresses that he had no control. Webster will have to be evaluated, but right now it sounds as if he is setting up a defense that he was not responsible for his actions. I wasn't sure. What finally made you decide that this was real? The cops pulled me over. Okay. I was like, yeah, that happened. So when they pulled you over, what did you think? Well, they don't shoot me. Why would they want to shoot you? Pointing a bunch of guns at me, I don't know. Oh, but it certainly felt like they were, they were hoping I'd make a move or something. You didn't take your gun out of the car when they stopped you, did you? No. I the gun Do you think it went somewhere? Is it in your car because we've got your car? Tell me, if, if, if you can, what you remember when you saw the gun going off, what you saw. Nothing. I, I mean, you, you I said, saw things, but I mean... Uh, you um, said earlier that it was like you saw a gun, like third person, and you saw the gun shooting. What, yeah, what like, a, like an aperture, whatever it's called, like when your arm's literally disconnected from your body, it looked like. And it just doesn't make any fucking sense. Okay. I'm normally a reasonable guy. I don't... I'm all better. Part of what we're trying to do here is verify what we already know and then I also want to help you. You're telling me that you have some issues that are going on and part of our job is not only find out what kind of things happen and you know help people that have been hurt etc but we want to get help to people who get caught up in situations and do you think you need help? Do you, do you want help? I'm sorry, but I'm like, like, there's no number to call, like... Okay. Well, you've got a therapist that you're talking to. All they can do is give you these fucking drugs and... put them all over the place. <laughs> and he... Ugh. Wait, there's something there to tell me, you know. Tell me what you saw, Jeremy, when you said from third person you saw the gun shooting. Tell me what you remember. Because it tells me that you want to be honest with me and tell me what I already know. And I, I think you will. I think you're going to. So that's, the, that's what... Ed. I just... Uh, I wasn't... 
city control. Okay. You know, so. Webster still refuses to give any real details of what happened and instead keeps focusing on his lack of control. According to witnesses, Webster appeared to know exactly what he was doing. So, so guilty, and but I just uh, so you weren't in never decided. So you weren't in control. You felt like you were not in control. Watching like it was a dream or a movie. Tell me what the movie showed in your mind. Tell me what you remember seeing as you were over there. Okay, let me ask you this. The guy in the truck. The man in the other truck had nothing to do with the original altercation. He was sitting with his nine-year-old daughter, waiting for her dental appointment. He and Webster made eye contact, and Webster approached the truck and fired. The man was injured and attempted to pull out of the parking lot to prevent his daughter from being shot as well. In the parking lot. Remember a guy in the truck? He shot at a truck in the parking lot. Tell me about that. We talked to him and he said that he saw you shooting and he was in his truck and he said you guys made eye contact and he thought the reason you shot him is because he saw you. And he backed his truck up and hit something. Remember that? Yeah, I remember a truck. Okay. Do you remember shooting at the truck and hitting it? Somebody said you shot a whole bunch of times at him. He said that. Was it because he saw you? Is that what the reason was? I don't think there was a reason. Okay. So you just shot at him because he was there? Ridiculous. Well, that's a yes or no question. Yes. Yeah, I, I guess. Do you remember him in the truck? I remember seeing the truck. I remember a truck backing up, hitting something. What's the next thing you remember? Do you remember standing in that parking lot where that lady pulled into? What is that? Yeah, I remember standing there. You remember standing there? Do you remember walking towards her? But you, you, you remember 
after her you walked a certain distance away from your car and then you shot a couple of other people. You remember that? Tell me about that. Tell me what you remember about that. About what? About after you shot her, you walked past her and you went to another spot out there and you shot a couple of other people. Tell me about what you remember. You remember her having uh, some kids with her that came out of her car? Yeah, I remember that being kids. Okay. Do you remember when you walked by one of those kids that was laying on the ground? In addition to supposedly having no control, Webster keeps saying that he can't recall what happened. While not always the case, this often indicates that a suspect is lying or hiding something. When? when? After you shot that lady, you walked past her, and then you were still outside but closer to the building, and there was one of those kids lying on the ground there. And I've got a couple of people who were there that saw you and what you did. How do you guys do your fucking job? Mm -hmm. Well, what we want to do. Well, how do you live with? We're trying to help. We, those of us that do this, we stay here because we want to help. And you can help us. I just want the truth, and I want you to tell me what you remember when you walked by that kid that was laying on the ground after you shot that lady. Is that a hard one to talk about? Yeah. That's fair. If I if I told you what was described to me as happening, would you answer yes or no so you don't have to describe it? I I'd rather hear it from you. Why? <clears throat> or would you rather me tell you what the witnesses saw that happened? <clears throat> you can say whatever you want. Right? Well, I'm going to tell you what people have told me. I'm not guessing. I'm telling you facts. But they said after you shot that lady, you walked around and there was a kid lying on the ground and you shot the kid while he was on the ground or shot at him. Tell me about that. Do you want to know how many people that you shot? You told me it's more than one. If you had to make a guess or if you wanted to tell me, what, what number would you give me? Two. More. Three. More. Four. Yes.
Tell me what you remember about the, the two kids. The boys were 13 and 7. Their younger brother managed to run away and escape without injury. I remember seeing them get shot. Both of them? And I guess you answered my question. You said you remembered seeing them get shot. Can I assume that means both? Yeah, one or two. Okay. Where were they? Were they all outside? No, it was Did all in that general area of the okay. cars. If I showed you, may I show you a, a, just a photograph of that area here? And I'll explain that to you. This here is the business right here where you were. And from what witnesses said, is you turned into this parking lot right here. Does that look familiar to you? Does that look like the parking lot that you pulled into? I'm sure there's only one part on. Okay. But does it look familiar to you? Is that where you were today? I'm sure wherever, yeah, I'm sure wherever it happened is where it happened. Okay. Well, this is where it happened right here. I know that for a fact. I wasn't down there myself, but this is printed for me because this is where it happened. And the witnesses said that you drove your car into this parking lot here. The purpose of this is I'd like to know where those, where the lady was, where the guy in the truck was and where the kids were. If, if you want to take my pen and just put an X, as you best recall where they were. How the truck was. Okay, just right on there with like a kind of little rectangle or something. Truck bumped into that wall. Okay, can you write a, or make a triangle, where, or I mean, I'm sorry, rectangle for where the truck is? Okay, great. So you bumped into that wall? Yeah. Now, is that after you fired shots at him? Um, I don't know the six, which order okay. everything happened in. It's all very... Okay. But you saw him back into there. Did you see anybody get out of that truck? No. Okay. okay. Did you see anyone in that truck? A guy in the truck? Okay. Okay. Did you see anybody else? No. In the truck? Okay. All right. Before that happened, that's when those two kids were back here. Where? Let me back up a little bit. Where, where did you park your car when you pulled into there, and where was that lady's car? Show me that. Because I am told that she pulled in there first, and then you parked behind her. Is that correct? Okay, can you draw using rectangles again where that might be, as best you can recall? Yeah. Okay. So the only thing on my mind is going to get murdered. Webster shows a lack of empathy for his victim. Say that again. I'm going to get murdered. It's like in the middle of the parking lot, I think. Okay. Can you just draw a circle or something where her car was or where your car was? I'm just trying to get reference in my mind from you where you were. We've had witnesses tell us, but I want to hear from you. There. 
draw where I can see it. That's kind of I, that's probably a bad color of pen there. Okay. Now whose car would that be? Whose car would that be? Sharpie. Okay. The circle you just drew is that your car or her car? Um, hers. Her car. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna just put her car here. And this right here is the truck. I just want to do this so you can see me doing it. Make sure I catch this right now. Where would your car be? Kind of behind her, like draw another circle. Uh, what behind her is? Okay. Okay. okay so this is your car. <coughs> So this is Jeremy's car. Okay, there you go. This would be much easier to see. Oh, okay. It's kind of hard to write on that. Yeah, that's not very good. All right. Okay, so tell me about where those kids were, because you said you remembered a couple of kids. We were all in the same area, I think. Same area? Was it all outside? Yeah. Okay. So the truck, the lady in the car, and the two kids were all outside. Mm -hmm. Did you ever go in that building? Did you ever notice anybody looking out of that building when this was going on? Okay. What question do you think is on our minds is the, the one question that we would ask. I don't know. Hey, why? That's that's the question we want to know. Okay. Yearly mentally ill and I... Mental illness is consistently blamed for his actions, but Webster is starting to sound as if he is imitating what he thinks someone who wasn't in control of their actions would say. I have all these... It has so little to do with that, with what happened. Okay, so the... So whatever, like, I thought I was doing all right. Okay, this is a yes or no question. When you pulled into that and followed that lady in there, were you angry? at what had transpired between you and her? I don't know if that's the right word. Did it irritate you? I mean, it, it did something for you to follow her in there. She didn't do anything. Why'd you follow her in there? No, I mean, she did something, but like not. What did she do? Because she told me that you guys had words and on the highway there was maybe some hand signals or gestures. She she said that she felt like she cut you off. Mm -hmm. And she mentioned something about I used my turn signal when she was talking to you and she says, oh, just leave me alone, I've got kids or something. Tell me what you remember. I remember, I remember she almost hit me. Where? On the, okay. the road. Okay. So is that why you followed her there to talk to her? So she almost hit you on the road. What kind of car was she driving? Oh. Okay. You did something a lot of people do. That, uh, as far as experiencing some sort of traffic altercation and then... No, it has nothing to do with that. Well, what does it have to do with? Been any on at any time. drive so much. Mm -hmm. Knowing what I just told you about four people, well, is there anything you'd like to say to those people? I don't think they give a shit what I have to say. I do. Me. I agree. Alright, fuck me. No. Huh. We do shit. Okay.
What would you, what did you I say? I care about what you have to say. Why? I think it's a fair question. What would you like to say to those people? Um, wish uh, didn't have. Webster's response is half-hearted at best and may only have been said because he knows it is the expected answer. You feel remorse? Yeah, I mean, I wish it didn't happen. Okay. You know the type of ammunition you carry in your gun? Okay. Some guys know the brand or type of bullets. Or Where do you buy your ammunition? Some random small store, I think. So, uh, I mean, I've only been shooting a couple times and I've just bought Jacketed round, uh, jacketed round at uh, Walmart. Okay. Like full metal jacket or hollow points? Full metal. Is that what you have in your gun today? No, I, uh, I don't carry full metal. Or I use personal defense rounds. Uh, That's the brand? No, I don't know what the brand is. I just know that they're hollow. Hollow points. What do you know about those? What are they? Why are they personal defense rounds? What, what makes them a personal defense round? Uh, I don't know a lot about it, but I know that the ballistics are different. The ballistics are different? Yeah. Okay. So you said you've shot it only a couple of times before then? Mm -hmm. Where did you shoot it, or do you go to a range, or? I went to a big shooting center, like Magnum Shooting Center in Colorado Springs once. Okay. Where else did you go? That was the only place, actually. Where else did you shoot if you didn't go to a shooting center? That was the only place I've gone. I've okay. been invited to go, like, into the mountains and stuff, but I haven't gone. Okay. And I know you told me you've only had that gun for two months, is that correct? A couple of months? Couple, yeah, I couldn't tell you the exact okay. day. Okay. And I know this is something I've asked before, but it's very important that we have the gun. Do you not have it? I haven't looked in your car. If it's in, if it's in your car, you just need to tell me because we're going to look into your car. I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I'll save you guys the hassle sorting through all the the bullshit in there. Okay. Probably in the trunk. No attempt was made to hide the gun, even though Webster easily could have done so before the police caught up with him. In the trunk. Okay. Yeah. We're in the trunk. You know, uh, my backpack. Okay. Thank you for that. What else would we find back there? That's it. Okay. AA books and tools from <laughs> fucking work, and then I thought. Um, quitting drinking was going to solve my, uh, my mental problems, but uh, the medicine I thought. So you said you've got AA books. Are you in AA right now? Yeah, today is four months sober. Okay. So have you been completely sober or have you cheated a little bit? No, I'm sober on alcohol. Um, weed a little bit here and there, um, okay. but alcohol was going to kill me. So, oh, sober on alcohol for four months. Or could have, you know. Sure. I was worried about the blackouts combined with the the realization or whatever the fuck it's called. Okay. How long have you been drinking alcohol before you quit? Four years. How much did you drink? A hundred something beers a week. A hundred beers a week? Yeah, at least. Okay. What else did you drink? What other kind of alcohol? Whiskey. How much of that? 
uh, just here and there, because things got real out of hand. One time I got, uh, I completely lost my mind and got into an altercation with the Colorado Springs Police Department and fucked up the walls of my apartment and probably should have, probably should have been, uh, committed that, that day, like, three. There were no records of this incident, so for whatever reason, Webster was not charged. Four years ago, a month. I think there wasn't a bed available or something. Did you get arrested for something, or did you go to like a detoxification center? Nothing, nothing. It okay. Was misunderstanding. Just a huge drunken shit, like crazy misunderstanding. And you mentioned weed, mm -hmm. and it's legal. Mm -hmm. How often are you doing weed now? Uh, so twice a week. Two times per week. How much do you use? It's a little bit. Did you have some today? No, not today. When's the last time you had weed? Uh, it's Thursday, right? Yes. Is that right? Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. And how long have you been using weed? Ten years. Pretty steady? Or yeah, all day, every day until the AA thing kind of took me down a notch. Okay. How has weed affected you? Hard one. Pardon me? That's a hard one. I don't know. Okay. There's a lot a lot of unknowns, but yeah. I guess you could tell me how it affects you. I uh well turns out if I knew what I knew now. wouldn't have done it because it was like a Pandora's box that led to just a lot of just altered the timeline of my life in a in a certain way and what are you talking about the weed or the alcohol well both, both but, okay. but, but uh, the, the weed came first um, you think the weed has something to do with these uh, visions that you're having or these nightmares I don't think so um Well, no, because most people, uh, I think, I think mostly it actually makes people not dream. So maybe there's something wrong with me because I actually dream like vividly. I remember every dream. I wake up in the morning. I have to pinch myself, like, or find things to confirm that that, that it's that it's real. And other than that medication that was just prescribed to you by your therapist, like four or something. Yeah, a bunch of them. Do you take four medications? Was that all that just recently prescribed to you? Yeah. Okay. And you don't remember any of those? Uh, I know. Yeah, I can. I can, I can try to. Where are where are all of those drugs? In my apartment. We'll find them. Where in your apartment? Uh. On the, like the coffee, right on the coffee table. On the coffee table. Okay. Other than those four medications that are prescribed to you, are you, have you been or are you taking any other medications? No, only ones that are prescribed. Okay. Are you taking any illicit drugs like speed or heroin or pill type drugs? No, weed was my thing, and I was really against, like, alcohol and any hard drug, but, um, yeah, long story short, no, the, the alcohol is the hardest drug I got into. Okay. Would you, is it safe to say that today, when you got up this morning and until this whole thing happened, you hadn't had alcohol or you hadn't taken weed, because you said you last had weed Tuesday? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's, it would be correct. I was totally sober today. Okay. The detective wants to make sure there was nothing in Webster's system that could have influenced his decisions or impaired his judgment. So did you feel pretty good when you got up this morning? I felt all right. I mean, I'm just trying to get through the days, like... Uh, 
So you got you got a good steady job. Yeah, We're steady enough, I guess. Okay, are you making money to pay your bills? <laughs> enough to enough to keep me in the the rat race, like. Are you you pay rent where you're living right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, are you up on your rent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything was everything was going good. Are you going to I was rebuilding my life from scratch. I was on the <laughs> December and progressively getting better, keeping everything in check. Okay. Take take this like I don't know what happened. Because there's no logic or reason okay. to it. Like I, I really need to backtrack to what happened today and I, I suspect that a lot of this is in your mind and it's hard for you to talk about. Is that kind of a fair statement? I just wish... Oh. Do you wish this all would go away? I just wish that when I saw that there was no return tractor trailer on 25 today that I took it as a sign to take a day for myself that I didn't know I needed. I don't know. Did you set out to shoot people today? Fuck no. Fuck no. Absolutely not. Okay. It just happened fast and Would you... And I'm really just concerned for my own safety at this point. Cause Tell me about that. Cause I should have been committed before this and committed myself or been committed by any one of my family members who know that I'm fucked in the head. Um, or not pass the background check because of the altercation with the Colorado Springs police. And Can I ask you a yes or no question as I go back to what happened over here at this parking lot? Yeah. Witnesses said that you shot the lady and then you walked past her and they heard some other shots. They didn't know who got shot, but then you walked by the kid that was laying on the ground and they said you fired one or two more shots at the kid on the ground. Did you know if that kid was already dead or did you why why did you shoot when he was on the ground that I really just don't recall I don't think there was any reason behind anything or logic or justification or some switch just went off Do anything to take this back? Well, you're on the path to helping to some degree by talking about this. And anybody that I talk to, I always tell them getting the truth out is the best, even in a difficult situation. I'm only asking I'm you just, for the truth. Yeah, I'm going to give you the truth because I'm exhausted of everything. I'm exhausted of. Okay. We just never do that. What it happened.
the intermittent bouts of tears are easily shut off when Webster changes to a different subject, and it is usually centered on himself rather than what he has done. Well, the lady that talked to us about driving your car by you and talking about the traffic situation. She, she described it as somewhat of an altercation between you and her, and you said she almost hit you. Is that... And then she yelled something or another, like, fuck you, cocksucker, or mother, I don't know what she said. Okay, you said she said some bad words, and those something are bad words. Something or another. Those are bad words. Well, I probably told her to fuck herself, you know, move on with the day. Is that when she got out of the car and was telling you that? Is that what triggered this? Were you angry at that point? Were you upset? Were you... It was a Tell me how you felt. I didn't feel anything. I just felt not there. I mean, I guess... You guess what? Anger, but... Okay, that's a logical answer that you felt anger after she said those words. Oh. It does matter. Because I'm trying to find out the why here. I want to know why... The why is a timeline of my, of my life, I think, that led up to this day. And I think it was something I was trying to avoid. Um, like, I didn't know this was going to happen. But I knew something eventually could happen because of all of these factors at play. But I've been trying to manage it myself, and I'm not a fucking expert. And Have you ever... Uh Pulled your gun out on someone in anger prior to this? So this is the first time? No. Can we talk about getting some uh, food rounds that we seen? Yes. I'll be happy to do that for you. Thank you. Okay. My, my question is, after you, why did you shoot the others after you shot her? She was the one that angered you and was calling you dirty names. There's no reason for anyone not yet. Tell me what, what the reason was, though. There had to be a reason. I don't believe there was a reason. Was it, it because... It just happened. Okay. Was it because the kids were with her and you were so angry and you wanted to punish her? Fuck no. Why do I care about any of this? this just is the real problem is now... Now the real me's back and I'm just like, what the fuck? So you feel like the real you is here right now. You're, you feel like you're in control. Yeah, but now I'm... <laughs> it's bullshit. Like, my personality stems from the best to the worst of humanity, and I was trying to get it all under control, and then I didn't see any of this coming. It's almost like predetermined or something. I had no fucking control over myself. Trying to pass his actions off as predetermined isn't going to help Webster's defense, but it shows that he isn't going to give the detective a true reason for what he did. And... You know, it just seems predetermined, like in some fucked up way. That's what I was trying to explain why some external force has been guiding me towards this. Like not, like it just fucking happened. Like that. Okay. You now, since you're more at probably a more relaxed, feeling you said it's more of the real you right now 
Do you now? Do you now remember the four people? There was the lady and her kids in the truck, right? In a car, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, lady and the kids, and then the truck, yes. See, I do remember that. Okay. Tell me what well, you do remember now that you're, it's yourself right now. I'm still... How many of them are okay? Three are okay. What's your goal here? For you to tell me what I already know. That's my goal. For, for what purpose? To show me that you're honest, you want to help, and so there are no unanswered questions when I leave. I just want for that not to happen ever again. Okay, I, I would agree with that. Do you remember the lady and the two kids and the guy in the truck? If you had to tell me in a real quick story about what happened, A, B, C, D, you have four people, tell me that right now and, and I won't go there anymore. That's all I'm asking you. A, B, C, D. Well, I suppose to eat. I'll, I, I don't I, know if I have appetite. Okay. I'll, I'll get you a sandwich uh, or a slice of pizza or something, okay? Tell me, just A, B, C, D, and I, I won't address that anymore. You pull into the parking lot, she gets out, she says it's nasty words, called you an effing cocksucker. Tell me what happened. I just know that I shot the lady, the kids, and at the truck. That's what I saw happen. I didn't feel present, but I know that, that it was me. Okay. So you shot the lady, you shot the kids, you said kids, plural. So two kids, correct? Yeah, two kids, I think. Okay. And then the truck. You described the truck very well to me when you shot it in. You described the lady. Tell me about the kids. A, B, C, D. Just tell me the kids, where they were and how you shot them. That's all I want to know. It was just in... I don't know. Just tell me as you're walking how this thing happened. Webster keeps going off track and avoiding answering direct questions about the shooting in full, so the detective redirects him. That's just... Why, wh what was the question? Sorry. From the beginning, you, you you know, A, B, C, D, we got four people. Just tell me when you shot the lady, tell me where you walked and how you shot the first kid, how you shot the second kid, and then um, you said the truck was last. Just tell me how that happened. I'll, I'll tell you, let's get through with that, I'll go get you a sandwich and then I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, okay? That's all I want you to do is just answer that. Just walk me through it. You said it's now, it's yourself, you're grounded. I'm sorry. Okay, you're sorry? Okay. Oh. OK, 
Okay, so you, the lady's out of the car, she's yelling at you, tell me wh where you walk and what you do. Again, oh, I, I'm, I'm just. Uh, would, would it be easier if you wrote it, wrote it down? I just, it's like generic, like. That's okay. I'll take, I'll take it however you give it to me. If it's generic, that's fine. Just, just tell me, and, and we won't revisit that. Go ahead and tell me. Um, absolute news. There's a lady, a um, kid next to her, I think. And then, uh, lady and the kid, the kid's next door, they're on the sidewalk. What next? Well, that, that's it. I want to know what order you shot them. Oh, I don't know. Okay, you shot the lady, the lady first, first. for sure. Okay, how many shots did you fire at her? I don't know. I don't know. Did you fire one? Maybe a couple, I don't know. Okay. And when you shot her, what, what did you see her do? What did she say? Nothing. Okay. And then what did you do when she fell to the ground? What do you mean digging your own grave? What, is, what does that mean? I'm going to get put to death, stabbed to death, or a cop will kill me. I will fake my suicide. So she falls to the ground. What do you do? Witnesses tell me you keep walking. Walking where? In the parking lot towards her after you shot her. And you said the kid was beside her. Is he the first one you shot? The first person or the first kid? The first kid. Yeah, I think so. Okay, how many times did you shoot him? I think, um... the one that you shot on the ground again? I don't, I really, 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 like, <sighs> really blurry. Witnesses say that Webster immediately turned his attention to the children once Megan Bigelow was down, even though they had done nothing to provoke him and were trying to escape. Okay, well tell me what you remember. You shot him, he went to the ground, what did you do then? Because witnesses said you walked from there. It was all right it was all within such a short area, I wouldn't okay. call it walking. It was all okay. all around that, just right near okay. her car, in front of it, my car, okay. near there. So you didn't walk very far? So no, I was just still there. Okay. So after you shot the first kid, what did you do? I don't, 
what did you see? You obviously saw the other kid. What was he doing? Maybe standing there. I okay. Do you remember how many times you shot him? No. Oh. Once? Probably once. Maybe twice. Maybe twice? And what did he do when you shot him? Fell to the ground. Okay. And what did you do? Uh -oh. Left after that. Some witnesses that were there said that you shot one of these kids while they were lying on the ground. And I'm asking you if you remember which it was it the first one you shot on the ground or the second one you shot on the ground? I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. From there, tell me about the truck thing. Are you walking back to your car at that point when you see the truck the guy in the truck? to be on the way out. Okay. Tell me what you what you saw and felt when you saw him in the truck when he's looking at you. Didn't really make eye contact. Okay. Because he said he told us that he was looking at you when he was in the truck. He's probably, he's probably right. He was more okay. more aware of the situation than me. Okay. And how many times did you shoot at the truck? A handful. Handful. A few. You know, five, well, that's six. Five, six times. A few, yeah. Okay, and that's consistent with what witnesses said. They said you fired fired quite a few rounds at the truck. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, how many rounds does your gun hold? Fifteen. Okay. Did you have any bullets left uh, after this? Hold on. You guys will find out. Did you leave that ma same magazine in there? Or did you reload? Didn't reload, no. Did you have a spare magazine with you? I didn't even think of it. But, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but no. I you got one in the front seat with you? No, in the backpack. Uh, in the backpack? Yeah. Okay. Where, where were, did you keep that gun when, when you pulled it out? Where was it? My glove compartment, I think. Glove compartment? And why do you keep it there? In case, um, I guess a couple of unlikely scenarios that really scare me. I'm getting robbed or someone trying to kill you or... Okay. Um, things that I shouldn't have been, uh... So for self-defense, yeah. you keep that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay. So you understand the self-defense laws in Colorado? Do you know anything about what a law means in regards to self-defense in Colorado? Um, some of, I'm not an expert. Okay, tell me what you know or what you believe. Well, there's, a, there's Make My Day, right? That That's correct. That's in your own home. Correct. Can defend against an intruder. Um, you know, in Colorado, you can keep it um, loaded in your car. Um, it's a hand. Okay. So what, under the Make My Day law that you're referring to, Give me a scenario when you feel you would be justified to use that weapon. Well, make that I don't. Hmm. In the house is the most obvious one. Okay. In public, you know, someone's trying to rob you and if they have a gun. I'm not sure actually, because that's much more. So, if someone's trying to rob you, or someone has a gun, let's say they're pointing a gun at you, would you be justified in using that? I'm not sure. Okay. I think so. Okay. I think that's that makes sense. So would it be true that in order to defend yourself with that weapon, someone has to be hurting you, attacking you with another weapon, something like that, in order for you to defend yourself in your home, like you said, to make my day? Yeah, I'm 
I'm claiming that I was defending myself. Okay, what are you claiming? Nothing. I mean, I lost my mind. I lost my fucking mind. So do you in think... An in just a fucking instant. And if the gun wasn't there, I would have been good to go. You know, just find a way to deal, you know, cool down. But, uh, there was just some sort of lack of any thinking, like, any proper, like, thinking about if this happens, then this is going to happen, you know, and so don't do this. Um, so in retrospect, now that you're grounded and we're seeing the real you, <coughs> was this something that was wrong? I mean, could you use the Make My Day lot to defend what you did? Not only was Megan Bigelow unarmed, but Webster actively followed and confronted her, which rules out any possibility of self-defense. Is there anything that these people did that would make you use deadly force against them? No, the problem is I'm, it's just me. I'm the, I'm the problem. That's what I've been saying from the beginning here. Okay. Knowing that this happened now, for sure, it, uh... <clears throat> okay. I'm mostly... about what I should have done. Tell me about that. Well, first off, I shouldn't have came to Westminster today. Okay. Maybe I should have quit this job a while ago because it's been stressing me out. What else should you not have done? Well, let me tell you what, Jeremy, let me go get something to eat. Sure. Okay. You're probably hungry. Yeah. I'll be right back. <coughs> All right. I'll be right back. You're okay with water, right? Yeah. Okay. So when you said you're going to go there for the last time, what did you think was going to happen? Well, it's the... They were gonna, they were, they're going to get me. What were they going to get you for? For what? For, for that. Okay, for shooting those people. Yeah. So you it didn't knew feel real, but it gradually... So you knew the police were going to catch up to you and you knew that you would be held accountable for shooting those people. Is that a fair assessment? Of course. Of course. Um, so you knew what you did was against the law at that point? Do you agree? Afterwards, yes. I, yeah. How soon afterwards did you feel that? I was back at work because the whole time I was, I just started questioning whether I had just imagined it, you know. Um, but on my way home, I saw the helico helicopter, and it was uh, I just knew it was following me. What did you do when you saw the helicopter? Just driving. See if I can get on to see my cat before I have to. Before you have to what? Whatever comes next. Didn't plan any of this. I 
Uh, well, Jeremy, I've got a uh, detective that wants to come in and show you something. Uh, and he wants to talk to you a little bit. He's been working with me on this. Okay. So his name is Mike Lynch, and he'll be in here in just a minute. Sure. No worries. And uh, feel free to eat there. I, and if you need more water, I'll get you another bottle of water, okay? Yes, please. That's fine. Okay. Okay. He'll be coming in here in just a second. Mike Lynch. Hey, Jeremy. Hi. So, Jeremy, I've actually been watching the whole interview, so I've kind of watched you through this whole thing. I know what's been going on, so you don't have to repeat a lot of stuff. Okay? I'm not going to ask you to repeat anything, too. A few things I want to ask you about, though. You're having a little bit of a difficult time trying to express your feelings about why you wanted to shoot these people. Right? I didn't feel... Um just feel like feelings aren't relevant. Something just took over and I and it was like tunnel vision or walk, watching a movie or a dream. All my decision making stopped. But you made some conscious decisions about what you did this afternoon. The act was not random. It was provoked by an action however unintentional, that upset Webster, and he responded. It will be very hard to argue that he didn't know what he was doing after following her to a new location. How so? You followed a lady in a vehicle into a parking lot. You got out of your vehicle, you approached her with a handgun, and you shot her. That's a conscious decision, isn't it? Never make that decision. We did. It happened. Yes, it did. I didn't make the decision. What do you mean? Explain that to me. What do you mean you didn't make the decision? I don't feel like anything's. Isn't the truth of the matter that you got so pissed off at her for the traffic thing? Fuck no. Well, that's what made you mad. Oh, she that happened 50 times a day. Well, it did it enough that you followed her. She cut in front of you in the traffic construction down there. You got pissed off at her. I mean, you already admitted in the interview earlier that you might have said something like, fuck you. So you got pissed off at her for cutting you off, right? Isn't that what prompted this whole thing? In fact, this isn't the first time you've had a traffic altercation when you've gotten out and yelled at a lady, is it? Sorry? This isn't the first time that you've had a traffic disagreement, altercation with somebody where you've gotten out and yelled at somebody. What do you mean? Has it happened before? Where you've gotten no, out no, and yelled? No, that's absolutely the first. This, whatever happened today is the first time I've ever had a, um, like, anything significant. Okay. Right. But, it, but it's kind of a pattern in your life, isn't it, that you get pissed off in traffic? People cut you off, people piss you off, you get mad at them? I think that's probably true for anybody, right? No, I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of people that drive with a mellow attitude knowing that traffic is going to be traffic and you just sit back and let it happen. But that's not your attitude, is it? Depends on the day. I, that's the attitude you described as the attitude I try to keep. That's what I've been working towards. So, do you want me to believe that you're insane? I don't care what you believe, because I don't like you. Okay, but I'm just trying to trying to draw this thing out a little bit. 
So we'll try to figure out what happened today. What I want is truth and justice. So all of the information will come forward. You want truth and justice for who? For them, but also for me. Which is fucking retarded. I just wish I locked myself up. Or didn't buy a gun. Those are the only two things I could. So are you telling me that there were no voices in your head telling you to go kill somebody today? That's a very ridiculous way of putting it, the voices in the head. Well, maybe in your situation, I've had lots of people tell me they have voices in their head. Some people tell me they have voices in their head, just go tell them to go kill people. Did that happen to you? Do you have voices in your head? tell whether my voice or these other layers of thinking are I don't know, this is kind of the type of thing I should be talking to my doctor about. Webster has never brought up hearing voices when talking with any therapist and it is important to note he didn't think of it until it was suggested. And uh, should have talked to my doctor about I understand your perspective. I know what you're trying to do. Well, I'm trying to figure out if you're sane or not. I don't know where the um, where the line is. Okay. Does having knowing the distance between right and wrong have anything to do with that? Yeah, it does. I just didn't feel like I was there. But you still say you're knowing the difference between right and wrong? Right now, yeah. Right then, I didn't know anything. I didn't know where I was, who I was what's going on, why this lady said this. And you weren't under the influence of any intoxicating beverages or liquor or drugs or anything else? No, I've been sober for a few months now. Um, so you weren't just so enthralled with your anger over the traffic thing? I mean, that's what it looks like to me. <coughs> me too. I was part of it, but I mean, you made some, for somebody to be insane, okay, you made some really conscious decisions about things beforehand and then afterwards. That leads me to believe that, that um, you actually knew exactly what you were doing today. I definitely didn't, because I wouldn't fucking do it. No way. Period. I wouldn't. You say I wouldn't do it. Well, who did it then? The fucking devil. So you're saying the devil made you do it? I'm saying I'm the devil. Just because you did such a heinous act? No, I've been the devil since I was born. Why? Is that the way your parents treated you? No, it's just all been revealed to me through fucking little clues. Like, um, random lyrics and numbers and... But come on, in reality you know that you're not the devil. 
No, I literally think that I'm the Antichrist. The Antichrist isn't the devil. Whatever. I'm all of them. It is obvious that Webster is choosing things at random. He can't even tell the difference between what he claims to be and something else from the same belief system and tries to cover up by saying that he is everything. It isn't usual for suspects to try to appear mentally imbalanced, but his attempt will not fool anyone. But yet, the devil won today, and I lost, and the devil lives inside of me. And now, you know, I'm trying to fight it. Your mom did say one, one thing that was fairly interesting. What? She said that you really have an anger issue. What? An anger issue. I've worked with anger problems. So she's right about that? Yeah. I get angry. Sometimes so angry to the point of losing control. It's not always anger that does that. But sometimes it is. Any external stimuli that's overwhelming. <clears throat> So you tell me, do you think you're insane? I do. I believe I'm fucked in the head. I believe that I should have been locked up in a loony bin. Well, why would they have locked you up? What would you have done to make them lock you up? I'm not that sure that that's all that much insane, okay? There's a lot of just don't want to take the pain anymore. Oh, Kill him. I can't differentiate real from not real. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? It's ambiguous. Like, I feel what happened today was obviously wrong. But, in general, that's a tough question, right or wrong, because there's right and wrong, and then there's pure evil. Today was pure evil. Today was pure evil. Jeremy Webster was convicted of 12 counts, including first-degree murder and numerous counts of attempted murder and assault. Webster received life without parole for the first-degree murder charge and 48 years for each of another six counts, which will run consecutive to each other and to the life sentence. He received 32 years each for another four counts, which will be served concurrently, and 16 years for a final count, also to be served concurrently. And that's where we end this video. If you liked today's video, then drop a line. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can check out my Patreon link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.